walked into my room. Alright, just, just waiting me. for this video stream to come up and we'll fully go live. Probably fine. I'll just turn off that. We'll go gonna do live. The Drew Miguel battle first, because that one's easier. Alright. Should be going live fairly soon. Alright, this is a why is the music I always choose have words in it? This is not what I like. Okay, but we should be live. What is going on, everyone? This is your boy, Brennan, also known as Sun Brother 2. I am the coach of your Salt Lake City Swamperts, and I am joined with the coach of the Winnipeg Jellison, Matt. Say hello to the people, Matt. What's up, guys? Matt here. And we are going to be bringing you guys a very late night LDL Week 2 recap. Now, uh... Unfortunately, when it comes to one of the battles this week, Austin uh, and Steven's battle wasn't able to happen. Austin, unfortunately, just didn't have the time to just battle at all. So, because just so at, at the end of it all, Steven was awarded a 6-0 victory over Austin this week. So there's that. And another part of news, uh, Jordan, unfortunately, has dropped. He was... Uh, what was the name of his team? I can never remember the name of his team. He was the coach of the uh, Luxembourg Balls or something. Yeah, the, yeah, the Luxembourg Bayals or something like that. I, I can never pronounce it correctly, but unfortunately, Jordan has just had uh, issues and well, not not well, not issues. He just he has just unfortunately stepped down due to cer certain circumstances, and so um, it sucks that we lose a coach. But taking his place and his team is going to be Mark. Uh, Mark, first of all, I just want to say welcome to the LDL, buddy. Uh, congrats on your first week uh, on your first week victory here in week two. Uh, I'm gonna, personally going to be going over that later on in the video. Uh, but other than that, as far as uh, I don't think there are any other updates. Do you, are there any updates? Uh, Mark made a few roster uh, moves. I'm not sure exactly what they are, but uh, they'll be posted somewhere. Yeah, let me double let me double check this really quick because I'll be able to pull it up right quick. Let's see. I believe one of them's not coming into effect until the following week anyway. But yeah, so yeah, more than likely we will we'll bring you that update in week three. I'll have to make a note and remind myself of that. But without further ado, we're gonna just jump right into this week's battle. And Matt, you're gonna be starting uh, off with the uh, with one of the first battles, right? Yep. Yeah, so first battle uh, we got this week is Miguel and the Tropic Serenas uh, facing off against Drew and the Nottinghamshire Venusaurs. So Drew is coming at us with a team of Mega Beedrill, Suicune, Hydreigon, Aerodactyl, Metagross, and Venusaur. And Miguel brought Serena, Mudsdale, Silvalli, Alolan Marowak, Mega Charizard X, and Skarmory. Mm. So Miguel leads Serena. Um, Drew leads Beedrill, Mega Evolves, Serena stays in, I'm assuming, he was Scarfed, thought he might outspeed, Mega Beedrill just Okos with U-Turn, and and right off the bat, it's 6-5, so, uh, God damn. yeah, it was, it was, I was a little surprised when that happened, but, uh, I think it went into Aerodactyl, set up the rocks, um, I believe Mid Mudsdale came in. There did there was some shenanigans there. Water Z move Aqua Tail. Probably uh, thanks to some prep assistance from Arthur. Um, uh, Mudsdale missed the rock slide, and uh, so Aerodactyl kills Mudsdale. Then Aqua Tail. Um, Skarmory comes in. Defogs. Um, a little bit of switching, and then Aerodactyl kills Skarmory with the Aqua Tail. Um, now Mega Charizard X comes in and uh, sets up the Dragon Dance. Uh, the same turn that Aerodactyl misses with the Stone Edge. Uh, I want you to know, as soon as you said that Mega Charizard comes in, the beat dropped for the music, and it was freaking lit. I'm sorry. That was like oh, the yeah. best oh, moment yeah. to say that. Yeah. I don't know. So Dragon Dance goes up, Mega Charizard comes in. Dodges a Draco Meteor from Hydreigon and kills Aerodactyl, Hydreigon, and Venusaur all in a row. Um, Omega Beedrill comes in and Revenge kills it with Drill Run. A um, bit more switching. You get Sil Valley against uh, Suicune. Some Calm Mind shenanigans. Sil Valley's going for Tri Attack. 
Um, eventually, Silvalli dies to Toxic the same turn that it kills Suicune with a tri attack. So they even trade. At this point, Miguel's down, uh, I think, to only his Alolan Marowak, and uh, it comes in. And I believe. What was the last Pokemon for? Oh, yeah, Metagross. Metagross came in. Oh no, Mega Beedrill was in and switched into Metagross. Metagross killed uh, Olin Marowak with an Earthquake. And that was it. Damn. It, it outsped for some reason. I mean, Olin Marowak's not very fast, but just... I mean, it was at like 80 or 90%. But, mm. uh, yeah, no, it was just a, a clean kill for Metagross. And so, Drew wins 2-0. Uh, it, it was a quick battle, 19 turns. Um... Some some good switches, some good some good plays, a few hacks, but you know, it is the hacks lord we're talking about, and uh, they brought he, us a good battle. It was close. He more than was blessed, and although he missed a rock slide too, like it, it wasn't one sided. I one rock slide. Yeah, Stone Edge and a and a Draco on the other side. Stone Edge and a Draco. Speaking. Oh wait, no, that's later on. Um, but going off of what you said of it being a really quick battle between. Miguel and Drew. Uh, the first, the only, what, the only battle I watched because it was 78 freaking turns. <laughs> it was 78 freaking turns, man. And I, oh my god, it was. I, I would like to say it was battle of the bulk, but it was battle of the one-sided bulk. If you, if you honestly have to ask, no. If you ask me, it was uh, Mark versus Kelvin. Uh, Mark, of course, being the new coach of the Luxembourg Bayals, and Kelvin with the Tokyo Tops. Uh, Mark decided to bring Talonflame, Clefable, Ninetales, Tangrowth, Toxapex, and Cresselia, while Kevin, uh, Kelvin, wow, I'm sorry, buddy, uh, is bringing <laughs> Mew, uh, Hitmon Top, Nihilego, Jolteon, Milotic, and Salamence. So first thing that pops into my head is, oh my god, he has three of the most bulkiest mons that you could ever possibly have, Mark does with uh, Tangrowth, and Toxapex having Regenerator, and Cresselia being an unstoppable wall. And Clefable, wall. too. And Clefable, he had four amazing Jeez. walls. And you know, that is what Jordan really wanted. He wanted that bulk there with the Aurora Veil, with the Ninetales, and Mark honestly played it wonderfully well. They both lead off. Uh, Mark leads off with his uh, Talonflame, and Kelvin leaves off with his Mew, uh, taking advantage of the guaranteed uh, uh, what, what, what's his ability? Uh, big Pax? Priority uh, Gale Wings? Gale Wings, that's what it was. Uh, Gale Wings with Brave Bird does over 50% to this Mew. Over 50% is actually quite nuts, and Mew goes for the knockoff and actually knocks off the Sharp Beak. So now because of that, Talonflame cannot two-shot this Mew anymore. And this Mew... Much. This Mew, honestly, was a continuous problem through the entire freaking battle i shit you not <laughs> it was absolutely nuts and so like i said it's about the bulk going through all 78 turns is gonna take me three hours to do i could do a whole video on it myself and go turn by turn but i'm not gonna do that but from there i believe uh nine tails which is in sets up the aurora veil for clefable to come in uh to eat up a sludge bomb from the nihilego but the nihilego is still a freaking ultra beast and it ain't taking uh, fucking no for an answer. It's still gonna sludge bomb the fuck out of you and do over 50% to this cliff, uh, this cliff fable. And it, it's, it was absolutely nuts. I couldn't believe it. And so from there, Tangrowth comes in, eats up a hit. It's gonna be Assault Vested, fully invested, of course. Sassy nature, I can only imagine. A really wonderful play. And from there, like I said, it was just a mixture of going back and forth between, you know, trying to gain the advantage on one another. And it wasn't until, um... Clefable was down to a decent amount of health uh, because of Mew more so than anything. This Mew put in the work, let me tell you what. This Mew got burns on every single one of Mark's mons except for the Talonflame, of course. Clefable was able to heal it with a natural cure, if I'm not mistaken, but this Mew burned everything in its path <laughs> and knocked off basically every item you ever thought you wanted for your Pokemon. This Mew put in work, but Clefable was down to the point where it needed to go for a Wish Protect, so wanting to prioritize on that, Kelvin switches into his Salamence on the Wish, and wanting to uh, still attack, 
uh, Mark, I believe, risks it and it goes for the Moonblast while Kelvin goes for the Dragon Dance that turn and actually lives the Moonblast. So here we have a plus one speed, plus one attack Salamence going up against uh, probably one of the bulkiest and best used fairies in all of the League format, especially Draft League format. Um, such a monster. Arthur had it last year it did the work. Absolutely. And Kelvin, you know, he he did come prepared setting up that uh, Dragon Dance as he goes for the Supersonic Sky Strike onto the Cliff Fable. But the freaking Cliff Fable lived. It lived with like over 20 HP left. This uh, Cliff Fable is such a monster. monster of a mon. It can do whatever you want it to, and it'll just stay on the field for as long as you want, baby. Cliff Fable ain't going nowhere. And of course, Cliff Fable picks up the kill on the Salamence. And from there, you know, it was just more switching around. Try like I said, trying to get that advantage. A couple crits here and there, but nothing too much because everything's pretty bulky. And eventually, um, the Toxapex was able to burn the Mew. And this was a very crucial play for sure because the Mew's only attacking move was Knockoff. This Mew carried Knockoff, Soft Boiled, Taunt, and Will-O-Wisp. So being burned did not benefit you what's in Kelvin whatsoever, as you will hear that this does come into uh, this does come into play later on in the match. And so later on, more monsters are slowly starting to be whittled down. And something I've noticed with Mark's playstyle is he just likes to keep mons alive. If, even if they're in the red, uh, not so much as the regenerator mons, he'll switch those out all he wants. But any mon that could potentially serve something on later down the line, he's gonna keep alive. So it's definitely something to think about for the other coaches out there. Uh, I'm only saying that to myself because I play him this uh, next week for week three but that's besides <laughs> the point but uh, I came to the point where my it was my low tick versus Tangrowth. Tangrowth no longer has his assault vest it's a scary situation uh, wanting to uh, keep this my low tick as long as he wants uh, alive as long as he wants uh, Kelvin goes for the recover uh, to get I think it was upwards of about maybe 65 70 percent HP well when Mark went for the first Leaf Storm, it missed. I'm thinking, this is the game changer right here. Kelvin's about to take this back. Kelvin's about to take this back. Like, eight, like 60, 55 turns into this damn match. He goes for a second recover. Kelvin, no! You had more than enough to take out this Tangrowth. I knew, I know you did. I want to see the Calx on this. You had the opportunity to knock him out with the Ice Beam. It didn't have its Assault Fest. Did he have the Ice Beam? He did have the Ice Beam. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure he did. And uh, this Milotic went for the recover, got back up to full. The Leaf Storm connects from the Tangrowth. It crits the Milotic oh. and knocks it out from full. I, oh, talking about like an unfortunate turn for that to happen of all times. And so from there, um, Kelvin eh, starting to lose more and more Mons. And it's just down uh, at the end of the battle. Like I said, it's a battle of the bulk. I could go on and on about this battle, Matt, for, for real. But it was down to Cresselia, who was sitting in the red, Tangrowth, who was burned, and Clefable. Clefable didn't die. Eh? Clefable didn't die. This heat, let me tell you, knockoff didn't do shit. It probably did seven points of damage. Yes, it did oh. get burned later on, but you know, that thing could wish protect all it wanted to. And with yep. Mew having, Mew having um, freaking uh, taunt, Brain. it could stop it for a second. But the burn kept whittling it down. The soft boil it would keep it going. And Mark really played it well. And the fact that he just kept switching out that Tangrowth, knowing that it was really the only thing that could sit on that field and try and get a crit on this Mew to slowly whittle it down. But unfortunately, that wasn't the case. And the battle carried on, I want to say, for another 12, 15 turns. And eventually, you know, it was it was basically timer saw at that point. And Kelvin uh, forfeited the 3-1 victory towards Mark. Wow. Just the, the, the bulk. The bulk is unreal on that team, and I'm a little bit scared to face Mark. I'm a little bit scared to face Mark now. I'm not going to lie. Better bring all your, uh, your big breakers. <laughs> you mean my whole entire team that's breakers? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And all your defensive walls, which it, you don't have. Sh shut up. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. Uh, long battle. <laughs> But now carrying on, uh, what's the next uh, battle that we're going to be moving on to here? I'll go into Randward against Jesse. Okay. So, um, I know uh, Randward was pretty hyped about this battle ahead of time. He uh, he 
was talking to me about a few sets, you know, kind of unsure about a few things. And uh, so he ended up bringing Tapu Bulu, Arcanine, Jirachi, Zygarde 50%, Manaphy, and Mamoswine. And Jesse was bringing Heatran, Tornadus T, Gliscor, Azelf, Azumarill, and Latias. Mm-hmm. And so, starts off Heatran, Bulu. Um, Randwood makes a nice switch into Arcanine, but he, uh, I think he's over predicting, uh, maybe, uh, getting, getting inside his head here, but he, he flare blisters into the Heatran, predicting a switch, which gives him a flash fire boost and a free turn to stealth rock. Oh, Those God. rocks mattered the whole match. It, they just chipped away at his team, and, um, eventually he got, Jesse got a Zoomerill in, which was Sap Sipper. It was a Sap Sipper Azumarill for that boost. It was Arcanine. Just eats the wood hammer, just gets that attack boost. Uh, missed the toxic actually, uh, but uh, yeah, that that Azumarill did work. It had two kills. It killed the Mamoswine and the the what was it? The Arcanine. Um, Gliscor uh, did some work. It swords danced on a Jirachi Protect and uh, proceeded to do over half to it with Earthquake. Uh, forced the switch. Almost KO'd Manaphy. Uh, lived an Ice Beam on 5 HP. <laughs> oh uh, my god. Forced Manaphy to switch out That's into Bulu. Um, Bulu KO'd Gliscor with the Stone Edge. Meanwhile, Gliscor had gotten back up to like 75% after all the recovery and switches and... Uh, was a long battle too um well yeah because you were telling me because of grassy terrain and everything had a form of recovery yeah yeah eventually eventually manaphy comes back in takes rocks damage and actually dies to a heatran flamethrower um damn at this point uh it's looking rough for for squid he's uh although he had a chance he had zygarde against uh against heatran he predicts the switch goes for the dragon dance Tornadus T comes in. Uh, now, all he has to do is uh, live a hit or at, and Dragon Dance again, and he can probably sweep this thing. The Tornadus hits Hurricane, confuses him, and his Lumberry proc, which. So he's, he's not confused anymore, he's the plus one. Um, he. Uh, doesn't outspeed because the Tornadus is Choice Scarf and Timid, I believe. I, I remember them talking about that. God damn, that's a fast Hurricane Tornadus hits then. again, and it did about 55, 60% the first time, and, and it just KOs the Zygarde, which, I mean, the Zygarde could have swept turned... most of the rest of the team. It could have. The rest of his team at that point was Azumarill, Latias. I don't think Azulf hit the field. And, uh, and Heatran, which... But you know what? That is a well-trained tornado being able to hit two hurricanes in a row. And, and confuse one of them, too. Oh, God. Well, that one I can understand because it's a 50% chance, but... Isn't it like 20 or 30? I, I could have sworn it was a 50-50 for Hurricane, but I could be wrong. I'm always wrong, though. Hurricane, it's it's 70% accuracy, and I think the confusion chance is like a skull burn. I think it's 30. Mm. Um... But uh, yeah, no, this this Tornadus did uh, it did its job, and Jirachi comes in smartly, knowing he can't touch it. He goes into Heatran, uh, Mamoswine. Uh, the Jirachi U-turns on the switch into Mamoswine. Mamoswine knocks off the Heatran, gets a KO. Uh, in comes Azumarill though, and Earthquake only does like 35, 40 percent. Skull does good chunk over half to the Mana Swine. Azumarill protects, gets the keeps getting recovery uh, from the leftovers. Um, Mana Swine knocks off just to get the leftovers gone and dies to a Scald. Then in comes Latias, the uh, the last Pokemon on the, that uh, that Randward saw before the end of the match. <laughs> Although it wasn't over because. Uh, Jirachi U-turns uh, into Bulu on the switch into Latias. 
Oh no, no, no. On the on the turn where Latias calm minds, Jirachi U turns into Bulu. Um and he had wished, so Bulu went back up to almost full. I think Jesus it was full, actually. Christ. So, so Bulu lands the Stone Edge, outspeeds. This Latias lives on one HP and KOs back with the Ice Beam. That was a bulky Latias, because one, Bulu outsped, and Bulu's slow as shit. I think it's base 80 speed. 75. 75. Okay, that's even. That's even. It improves my point even more. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, Latias is like base 100, isn't it? It's a base 110, I think. Oh, dang. Yeah, I think you're right. It's like 110 and, and Latios is like 115 or something. It's... it's Yo, both hold on. Maybe? I don't know. Jesse wants you to mention the Incineroar Z move. Oh, is this this... Is this the... the oh, yeah! Was this the one where he had the, uh... The Z Hail? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Randward had... So, Randward said he had Z Hail on his, uh... On his Mammoth line, which I believe gives you a plus one speed boost. It does. Which he would have been able to go for. On one of the turns, um, probably either the turn against Heatran or the turn after that, which would have given them the plus one speed boost, put up the hail. He had Snow Cloak, I believe, except instead of Ice EMZ, he put Incinium Z on his Mammoth Swine by accident, and uh, it proved to be his downfall as he, he wasn't able to capitalize on, on his. Very creative Memo Swine set. Um, squid, you're a moron. Squid. But then again, you, I can't talk. <laughs> you had some bad rolls today, or whatever this battle was. A bad uh, Tornadus hitting you with all the hurricanes, but you, you, you almost came back. Yeah, but, this this week was a. It was definitely a very interesting I mean, week of if, battles. If Latias had died, it was just. Uh, it would, it would have been something different altogether. Heepshan sure. was, but Heepshan was dead. Um, oh, Zumaril was uh, was still there. It probably would have taken care of it. Well, you never know. But and then Azelf as well, um, and Tornadus. But but yeah, Tornadus would have would have just cleaned up the the boo. That was a nice prep. Scarf Tornadus, uh, Theory, and I believe. Um, and then yeah. After the after the Latios kills the Bulu, it kills Jirachi with a sh plus one Shadow Ball at the end of the match. Just to, seal to, the deal. The deal. Yeah, like this was this oh. was this was an interesting week of battles for sure. Cause like I don't even want to talk about mine. <laughs> I know that's that's the one reason I don't want to talk about mine, but I have to. Uh, my battle this week, Salt Lake City Swampers took on the Seattle Onyx. Um, if you guys don't know, I actually have a team builder video as well as the, t the post commentary video over on my YouTube channel, YouTube Thumbbird2, you'll find me. But for my battle, you guys, I decided to bring Entei, Weavile, Mega Alakazam, Conkelder, Sylveon, and Fortress, while uh, Isaac, the unstoppable Isaac this season, he decided to bring Rotom Heat, Mega Pidgeot, uh, Excadrill. Pidgeot. Mm hmm No, no, Mega Pidgeot, because remember, because yeah, Squid, yeah. Squid got mad that he freaking yeah, sniped yeah. him. Mega Pidgeot. Alolan, uh, Alolan Muck, Tapu Koko, and Buzzwole. So, I'm looking at this team, I'm, and I immediately know that this Alolan Muck is Scarf. I mean, I'm not Scarf, it's uh, Assault Vest. Wow. I That's know a common set for it. Oh, yeah. And, and you know, there's a good reason, because its only real weakness is ground. And, unfortunately, Entei doesn't get Earthquake. But it's physical enough to really do decent damage to this muck, even if it is, you know, fully bulky, uh, physically bulky with the selfless. You know, it can still two shot it no matter what set it has, if I'm not mistaken. And so I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. It's like Entei handles really much everything on his team. And so even though I wanted it as a late game cleanup, I'm like, I'm going to risk the biscuit, because especially with this team that Isaac brought. I sent an Entei and. Isaac sends in his Rotom Heat. It carries Stone Edge on Entei for just a, such a reason, as well as that Mega Pidgeot, as well as that Buzzwole. Oh, it's neutral on Buzzwole. Stone Edge would have done, I want to say, 92 to like 100. And... No, no, it was like it was like 97 to like 107 percent damage Ooh. if I had landed the Stone Edge. Turn one, Thanks. turn one, I go for that stone edge and I miss. I've never and been, I've never been so sad 
at the beginning. You weren't of the, the only one this week, though. Exactly. Drew, Drew, missed, Drew missed the Stone Edge too. Well. Yeah, and that's what I was talking about earlier. It was just so sad because it's like Entei's my boy. Entei is literally my dog, and he missed a Stone Edge turn one, and because of that, um, Isaac's able to get a, a huge Thunderbolt off. I would have expected Volt Switch for the priority. Or for, for yeah, not for the priority for the. Um, Initiative. For the initiative, but no, he goes for Thunderbolt and he does over 50% to me. So it's like, do I stay in and do I risk this Stone Edge again? Or do I switch out? It's like, no, I can't lose this Entei. This Entei needs to help me clean up later on in this match. So I switch out into my Sylveon. Sylveon takes a Thunderbolt. Then in comes in the Alolan Muck. I try and go for a Hidden Power of Water that I kept secret on my Sylveon. Uh, to hit that Ooh. Rotom just in case because Rotom was really, besides the muck, really one of the only things that really walled that uh, Sylveon. Uh, oh, yeah, Hyper Voice probably did a bunch to muck still. Like, I wanted, I wanted, to I wanted to, but it's like I don't want to lose Sylveon yet, so I switched. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. switched directly, I think, like into Fortress and stuff to get up rocks, and the knockoff came off from the muck, knocked off my I Iapa Berry, which would have helped a lot later on, but. That's the 50%. Uh... Mm -hmm. theory, right? Yeah, like just in case I got hit by like a overheat or a heat wave or something like a like a or like a superpower from a buzzwool, you know, I would go down to yeah. sturdy, get 50% back, and be able to hit back with something or volt switch out or you know whatever I needed to do. Yeah. And you know, okay. from there, it's just like it was just it was a sad battle all in all for me because you know I'm trying to switch, I'm trying to gain the initiative, I'm making you know I'm doing decent damage with my Pokemon when I can, especially with my uh, Conkeldur. Conkeldur really came through for me this week and the fact that Dream Punch, even if some stuff was resisted or neutral, it still was putting in the bet the most amount of work because it was an Iron Fist set with bulk up and after um after I swapped out my uh, my fortress into my Conkeldur against this Alolan muck, it's like I should def I I wanna go for this bulk up right now to get an extra defense boost as well as get this uh attack boost to hit things extra hard but no i just go for the the drain punch to get more health back and, I'm, and i think you know that's potentially another place where i misplayed but from there you know isaac w got really lucky in the fact with rng that that stone edge missed turn one uh but it came to the point where rotom heat was once again in on the field and i had ente on the field I'm thinking Stone Edge is an 80% move. I gotta land it. And this, I, I shit you. Uh, I shit you not. I shit you not when I say. The feels. When I say Isaac took forever on this turn. I swear to God, he went to timer on this turn. Because I sat there at Rain my. To I, 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 no, I, no, not even that. I sat in the chair that I am in right now. And I, I, I had my hand, my fingers crossed. I had my, my toes were curled. My toes were fucking curled. I'm just like, please let me land it. 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 Please. Like, as I said that, I want to say for about a good 45 seconds, and I missed the stone edge again. So you're channeling me with the, uh, Mimic you play rough here. Dude, I, it just, it was so sad. Cause like, even like Entei, if Entei would have been able to, so it had two chances to kill Rotom. It had two chances to kill Rotom, and it's oh, not like it's not man. like Rotom wasn't like Rotom was at fifty less than fifty percent at that point, and that was the only guaranteed move. I yes, I had extreme speed, but it didn't do enough. If I was banded, that would have been another story. But because I was um, I was the ground reducing berry to take on stuff like the Excadrill and the Tyranitar, and like potentially even the Lola Muck, which I think it's Earthquake. You know, it's like I, I wanted to be pre prepared to live at least one hit so I could fire back and just in case something like that does come down because Entei is definitely not the fastest Pokemon, especially when it's an adamant nature to carry stuff for, like to carry moves like extreme speed. So the fact that I missed two Stone Edges this week against the same Pokemon. That hurts, man. Oh, man. It was, it was like I was cut with razor blades and lemon juice with a little bit of salt and oh, it just stung. You, you know my feels now. Last I really season, do. I, I got a Z splash up with Mimikyu. And not once, but two turns in a row, while I was toxic, I missed Play Rough. Oh, that's that's Plus even three worse. Play Rough. That's even worse because Play Rough, Play Rough has a higher accuracy to hit. Yeah, yeah. and but, I missed like four more the rest of the season too. But so yeah, that's I why mean, I just drafted. At the end of it all, you know, I was able to knock out 
I think the Rotom eventually with Conk Yeah, you Helder, killed it with Mach Punch, right? Yeah, with Mach Punch, yeah, with the, my Conk. And at that point, you know, it's, it, it dies to, I think it was, it was either Buzzwool or Tapu Koko. Buzzwool. It was Buzzwool. I, I try and come in with my, male, my Mega Alakazam. Of course, Alonamuk comes in. It eats up my Dazzling Gleam. It's, it's a Salt Vested. I can't do anything to this. I'm thinking... Well, maybe if I try and go into, uh, if I try and go into Weavile, maybe I can do something. But nope, I'm Pursuit Trapped. Oh. I totally forgot Muck got Pursuit to begin with, and it's something I really got to be more careful of in the future, especially with such a frail Mon like Mega Alakazam. And it's like, it's Weavile versus the world. And surprisingly, you know, Weavile put up a good fight. Weavile put up a good fight. It did a lot of damage to that Alolan Muck with low kick. And when Buzzwill came in, Poison Jab uh, had a potential chance, I think, to knock it out. Did you not have an Ice Move on it? I had Ice Shard because I wanted to fake the, uh, oh. the Scarf. Because I had an Assault Vest to live up a Heat, a heat Wave from... From Mega Pidgeot. From Mega Pidgeot and a Dazzling Gleam from Tapu Koko. Mmm, nice. But it was a physical, top, physical Tapu Koko, nonetheless. Um, physical? Ooh. Yeah, it was it was really shocking to see that when it hit my Conk Helder. But Brave yeah, Bird? Brave Bird, yep. Oh. And, but unfortunately, you know, for me, that those two um, Stone Edges really hurt. And I was talking to both... Uh, Isaac and Squid, because of course Squid helped helped his brother uh, team build. Like they both agreed with me that if uh, that if one of those stone la stone edges had landed, that it would have been a, a much closer battle. If not, they I think it, it was Squid that said just just how the play style was and the Monji brought it, you honestly I probably would have walked away with the victory. And that's just what sucked is like like the people that built my the team that destroyed me said you had you could have won. You actually oh, could have won if that's you landed. Just crushing. Right? And so like that way just hurts so much. But you know what? Congrats to Isaac. He's now two and oh. I think he's like the top team in the league right now. So kudos to you, Wait. bro. I think he's had like one Pokemon die. Right? Exactly. <laughs> you got a six oh sweep the first week and you got a five oh sweep this week. So kudos to you, Isaac. Well done. Well done, brother. But now we are on to the last battle. Alright, this one's mine. Uh, big pressure on me this week. I was playing the former, the the champ from last season, Arthur. Um, I I felt I felt good about my prep. Um, it was all about how I played. Arthur told me he was kind of scared of my team uh, when we started the battle, but I I brought some interesting things. Uh, I brought Thunderous, Incarnate, Garchomp, Terrakion, which are all pretty standard. Then I brought the Lolan Sand Flash, uh, Thoraptor, and Mega Sableye. Uh, Arthur brought Raichu, his Landorus Incarnate, uh, Magirna, Pukamuku, Mega Medicham, and Delmize. And I had a feeling the Mega Medicham was coming, which, so I knew I had to bring the Mega Sableye. Um, I don't remember exactly how the battle started. It was a lot of switching, U-turns, both switches for initiative. Um, eventually, um, he got it, uh, his Magirna in against my Lillian Sand Slash. Uh, outsped me, went for the Hidden Power Fire, um, killed it, got his Soul Heart boost, and then it was uh, it was not a good time from there, because I believe his Pukamuka had set up Light Screen, and I brought in my Garchomp, which was a special Garchomp, no, carrying Earth Power, Fire right. Blast, Draco Meteor. this team with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, first of all, I'm like, he might even be, like, Shuckaberry or Akaberry or something, so... Going for offensive move might do piddly amount of damage because the light screen is up too. So I'm just gonna go for the stealth rock with my Garchomp. Um, he thought that I was I would predict the switch and, and do that, but I I was just <laughs> going for something, hoping that he'd switch or, or uh, I don't know. He killed me with Ice Beam. Now he's at plus two. At like full health with him again. I I was I was I was doing bad here. I was like. All right, I gotta bring Thunderous in. I think Light Screen had ended by then, um, but I just needed damage on this thing. So Thunderous comes in, I Thunderbolt it. I think I did about 40%, but again, he's a plus two Magirna. Flur Cannon just Oko's my Thunderous, just destroys me. It's plus um, three. Yeah, okay. so we went up, 
went down to zero and then back up to plus one. Um, yeah, it was it was a slaughter. Oh at, yeah, at that's this point, right. I forgot about Sir Cannon doing that. Yeah. Yeah, it was six three. Um, you can see his commentary actually. Uh, Arthur made his own um, uh, recap video on it, so mm -hmm. I can post the link to that later. But anyway, so at this point, it's it's. It's scary, but Magirn is in, in killable range. I bring in Terrakion. Um, I believe he switched out. I predicted that Earthquake uh, and when he switched into Delmize, predicting the close combat or or just something. Um, I don't remember what it was. Uh, I Stone Edge on Delmize. He didn't have a grass move. He, he talked about it, why he didn't have that somewhere. He hit me with a... Uh, I want to say a Shadow Claw. Crit yeah. me. Uh, almost killed my Terrakion with a crit Shadow Claw. I will say, uh, Shadow Claw does have a high chance to crit, so goddamn. I hit damn. two Stone Edges in a row, though. Sorry, Brennan. I know, uh, shut up. You took my Stone Edge. I crit the you second one. You have my Terrakion, one. and you took my Stone Edges. It's just crazy. I crit the second one, which didn't matter. And uh. if I crit the first one, I would have killed the Delmize and not taken the damage. But anyway, in comes Raichu. He nuzzles me just to kind of, you know, preserve his win con, like just to kind of, uh, I, he said he thought it might have been a misplay, but anyway, um, I killed Raichu with close combat, the Terrakion's paralyzed at this point and in the red, Magirna comes in, of course, kills it, Bolt switches out, um, I think he went into, I want to say, Mega Medicham maybe, or Pukumuku, I think it was Pukumuku. Um, Mega Sableye, I brought it in. Oh no, no, it was, uh, I think it was Mega Medicham. Mega Sableye, I Dark Pulse on his switch into Pukumuku. Uh, Dark Pulse again, and, or no, I Will Wisp on the switch in, and Dark Pulse killed Pukumuku. So I'm, I actually came back from 6 3 to, I think it was 3 2. I think, um, okay. So, but in comes Magirna now, of course, and I have Staraptor and Mega Sableye left. All right, what am I gonna do here? Uh, <laughs> gonna do shit. I was like, all right, uh, guess I'm just gonna die to to Magirna again. So this was Magirna's fifth kill this week. I, it's just it had the pressure and I I couldn't kill it and I didn't bring enough uh, to really handle it. And so every time, but like he could have brought other things in to kill the stuff like Landris or or like Mega Meta but he chose to bring Magirna in to get the kills. That's... I I I I honestly think that with how much how much he abused Celesteela last season. I think Arthur is on a mission to, to, to pick one Mon every season and get it banned to the next. He, he has <laughs> told me that he, he wants to get Magirna banned, and, and we'll see how it I, goes. I, I, I could have prepped better for it, though, this week, and I could have played a little bit better around it. Yeah, but um, but at the same time, it's like if you over if you over extend yeah. that prep for it and you bring everything to handle Magirna, you get destroyed by everything else. Yeah. But anyway, so so Magirna kills Mega Sableye. I actually had a chance here though. Magirna was in the red. Uh, I had Staraptor left. He had Landorus, Magirna, and Mega Metacham. Uh, my Staraptor was Jolly Max Speed, Reckless Bandit. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm like, all right, I can Brave Bird or Double Edge. It doesn't matter uh, because I'm banded. If I hit anything, it's gonna die. But I had a feeling his Landorus was Scarf from earlier because all he did was U-turn with it, I believe. Mm -hmm. So I was like, if it's Scarfed, it'll probably kill me anyway. But I, I went for it. You know, there's nothing left to do at that point. Double Edge kills Magirna. Landorus comes in. Stone Edges, of course. Lands his Stone hits. Edge. Yeah, Stone <laughs> Edge hits. Uh, kills Staraptor. So, so if he had missed any of his Flur Cannons, which... I believe it's like a 90% accurate move, just like Draco Meteor, or a Stone Edge. There, there was a chance I could have come back, but Arthur played really well. He he kept initiative really well, and and he ended up winning 2-0. Well, congratulations to all the coaches uh, that ended up picking up a W this week. Um, with week three coming up, uh, we will have Arthur versus Arthur and the. Uh, Phoenix Sunflora versus Drew and the Nottingham Noctowls. That's good. That should be a fun match. Then we have uh, Austin and the, the Dakota Ducklets versus myself. Yep, and the Winnipeg Jellicent. It's gonna be. Hopefully, that's gonna. That's a match that. Uh, supposed to happen Sunday. 
um, crossing our fingers that it actually could happen in time. I still got a prep though, so we'll see. <laughs> it should be a good battle though. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm excited. Uh. Oh my gosh, I totally f okay. Okay, I got I the matchups here. We got Steven against Miguel. Um, yeah, no, I have it pulled up. I'm just trying to remember oh, yeah. the T names as well. Uh, our Kentucky <laughs> Aerodactyl and Tropic Serenas. That's what it was. You got you got the bro you got the bro off. You have Isaac oh. and the Seattle Onyx versus uh, Squid and the Totodile Totodiles. I mean Toronto Totodiles. Holy hell, I'm tired. It's midnight. I'm sorry. <laughs> so both of them are cities that they don't live in. <laughs> exactly. I don't know huh. why. You could easily do like the Florida Feraligators or something like that. Something bitching like that or freaking. Uh, it, they got a cool logo, so I don't know. I don't, I don't mind. Or like the tan or like what the tamp. It's like Tampa Bay Dolphins, right? They could do Tampa They're Bay in Tapu Fini. Ilea, I believe, which is like right around uh, Miami, I think. Miami, hey. yeah. Then you have uh, Jesse and the Australian uh, Arcanines versus uh, Kelvin and the Tokyo Tops. That's a sick name. That I like is it. a sick name. And of course, he has to choose Tokyo, Kelvin, you freaking weeaboo. <laughs> and then, of course, he you... used to live there. <laughs> I know, <laughs> you, cool. the weeaboo. But then you have me. Uh, Coach of Salt Lake City Swamperts versus Mark and Alexandric Bayals. I'm sorry. Mark, if you want <laughs> to change the name, feel free. If you want to keep the name. Please do. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, with that, you guys, uh, Matt and I are going to get up out of here. Thank you so much uh, for take the time to watch this recap uh we love bringing this content to you guys and hopefully uh with future weeks to come with what 10 more weeks to go eight more weeks to go before playoffs hopefully some of us will be able to make a turnaround <laughs> that's for sure <laughs> i'm raising my hand really pretty high but like i said thank you guys so much for watching matt and i are going to get up out of here and we'll see you in the next recap see ya